You know, I don't know if you ever read, um, and I, 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 I hesitate to bring it up, but I don't know if you ever read Nathaniel Brandon's uh, kind of autobiography. But it's, Not yet. So I'll it's stomach it someday. He, he very much had this premise that he had to be John Galt. He had to live to that. He, could, he wasn't and he couldn't be, so he faked it for yep. years and years and years. And he was a good fake and he was brilliant at it. And the worst kind. I mean, he was a real, he really deceived the world. He deceived himself and it all collapsed all at once. And when you read his, when you read his autobiography, he is the villain in his own, own autobiography. It's quite yeah. clear what he's doing and why he's doing it. So that's a, that sounds like an interesting read. And it was a painful read because yeah. I found it very painful primarily because, you know, he's doing this to, to my heroine, you know, he's doing yeah. this to man. So, uh, yeah. so it's, it's hard to stomach. Yeah. But, but yes, I think it is for psychologists. I think it would be really interesting. To read. Yeah. But I think that's a real, not reductio. I mean, it's an actual real life example of imposter syndrome yep. gone mad because that's the extreme case scenario of what can happen if you remain on the premise that you're supposed to be that, you know, flawless, infallible model, right? Yep. Rather than that it's actually perfectly normal and fine and good to be confused and to struggle and to have uncertainty and to not even be able to fathom being a John Galt yet or, you know, or ever concretely, but not, not being sure what your version of John Galt would even look like, but, you know, genuinely striving to figure it out at whatever level you're already at. Yeah, no, I think that's, that is so crucial and so important, particularly for objectivists because they have this, this ideal. All right. Here's a, here's a question.